Hey, what's up everybody? James Brandon here. Today I'm going to show you how to take this image, a washed out, almost monochromatic image because there was so much haze and so little color to be found in this scene, and show you how to turn it into this using split toning and a few other techniques inside of Lightroom. So let's go. Okay, here we are inside of Lightroom. Now, a little bit of background on this image. This was at a place on Kauai called Ka Beach, where in the winter, the ocean is just crazy this time of year. It is nuts. And Ka Beach is famous, at least for photographers, because these waves just will explode out of the water. And I'm guessing there's some kind of underwater feature there, like a rock or a cliff or something like that. And these waves just go so high in the air, it's crazy. But this day, the, the ocean was so crazy that the waves were just getting obliterated. And you can see that I tried to capture that anger in the ocean in this shot. And I think we did a pretty good job of it that night. The problem was that we were getting this uh, thing called VOG, which is volcanic fog from the big island. It had blown all the way over to Kauai, and it just creates these really hazy, kind of uh, just desaturated conditions on the entire island. And that's what we were dealing with here. So there's not a lot of color in the image. It almost looks monochrome, like black and white, because there's so little color and saturation and depth in the image. And if we turn it to black and white real quick, you'll see the difference. So there is some color in there, it's just not a lot. And that's why we're gonna try to save this with a technique called split toning. Okay, so let's get into processing this photo and see what we can get out of this. I always like to start inside the basic panel and see what I can accomplish there. So that usually just involves, you know, playing around with the sliders and getting them to where I want them. So as far as like temp and temperature goes, I think those are probably fine where they are. Let's bring the exposure slider up a little bit and I'm kind of just keeping an eye on the histogram here. I don't want to blow anything out but probably just around right there is good. Um, contrast, uh, maybe bring that up a little bit just to kind of try to create a little bit of depth here. Maybe somewhere around right there. Okay, highlights, we wanna bring those back. I'll probably just bring them back all the way. You can see what it's doing. It's just kind of affecting the top part of this image where the sky is. The sun was somewhere up here, but it was, buried behind so much VOG that you couldn't really see it. It was a bright part uh, in the sky, but beyond that, man, you just really couldn't see much. Okay, shadows, we'll bring those up quite a bit. All right, and you can see if you hit the uh, backslash key, you'll get like a before and after. You can see we haven't done a whole lot, but it's already starting to look a little bit better. All right, whites, let's bring those back a little bit. And I'm just trying to create an image that I can work with here. I wanna you know, get as much shadow detail as I can and get as much highlight detail back as I can. All right, clarity, I usually don't do too much with that, but it kind of adds a little bit more depth to the image here, I think. So we'll, we'll play with that a little bit. And vibrance, maybe bring that up just a little bit. Okay, so let's do another before and after. So we're already getting to a pretty good spot. The vibrance helped a lot there. It kind of brought out a little bit more warmth in the highlights and a little bit more coolness in the shadows here. But we're gonna accentuate that with the uh, split toning. So I don't think we'll do anything with a tone curve or HSL panels. So let's just hop right into split toning. And actually before I do that, let's go down to lens corrections and make sure we have those on. I'll usually um, always turn on chromatic aberration. I don't think it's gonna be a huge issue here because we don't have a lot of contrast, but I always, no matter what, will at least try enable profile corrections and see if it helps or not. And I think here that it helps us enough to leave it on. You can see in the corners, it's getting rid of a little bit of vignetting. I'll turn that on and off. It's brightening those corners up a little bit. So yeah, we'll, we'll leave it on. Okay, on to split toning. So what is split toning? I think you might want to know that first if you've never done it before. Split toning is just the act of taking your highlights and adding a color cast to them, and then taking your shadows and adding a color cast to those. 
Now this is a technique that you'll see a lot in filmmaking. If you look at like any action movie poster, you'll see really warm skin tones and really cool backgrounds, uh, like a blue background and really warm, bright, orange, vibrant skin tones. And that's basically what split toning is. So we're gonna do pretty much the same thing here. We're gonna add like a warm um, color cast to the highlights and a cool one to the shadows and see what happens. So to do that in, in uh, Lightroom, we'll just go to this little box here. Now you can use the hue slider here too, but I like to just use this, this color picker and I'll choose like a warm color right around here usually. And then if you get out of it and decide you wanna change it, you can um, you know, play with that too. So if you wanted to bring it down a little bit more, you could. And then you just take this um, saturation slider too, and you can just drag that up and down. So we'll get somewhere like right here. Okay, and I think that looks pretty good for the highlights. And then for the shadows, we'll do the same thing, bring up the color picker, and then just choose something cool. I usually like to stay between like blue and teal here rather than blue and purple over here, just because purple usually doesn't look very very natural. So I'll bring, I'll just kind of play around and I usually like to err on the on the more subtle side with the shadows. So if you go up too high, you can see it starts looking pretty crazy. We'll try something like down here. Okay. And then we'll play with the, the hue as well here. I think, I think it's probably good right there. And then maybe bring the saturation up a little bit more. Okay, something like that. All right, and then we'll go back to our basic panel here and just kind of play around with it a little bit more. And I, I don't think we have a whole lot to do, but I'll usually just go around with the sliders and see if bringing them up or down does anything good. I think we could use a little bit more depth in the shadows here. All right, and then one other thing I'm starting to see now is this little squiggly over here. It's probably like a piece of dust on my sensor, but let's get rid of that real quick. So we'll bring up the, the clone brush with healing selected, and then we'll just draw over this and see what that does. All right, that did a pretty good job. We'll hit the A key to bring up the visualized spots just to see if there's anything else. And I actually don't think there is. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so we're done there. And just finish it off with some detail. We'll bring up the sharpening. I like to do like somewhere between 60 to 70 with a radius of like one to 1.2. And then I'll hold down the option key and then turn masking on and I'll start pulling this slider up. If you've never seen this before, it's probably gonna blow your mind. It's pretty awesome. But anything that's white is gonna get sharpened and anything that's black is gonna get left alone. So we're also seeing up there at the top, there might be a couple of dust spots up there. I'm not sure, we'll have to check that out here in a second. But yeah, so basically there's no reason to sharpen the sky. So we want the sky to be black here because that's just gonna introduce noise by sharpening it. And we want to sharpen the water and the ridge line. So probably right around there is gonna be good. Now let's go back to our dust spot real quick just to turn on visualized spots. And yeah, there might be a little dust spot there. We'll get rid of that and Nope, I don't think that's anything there, so. Okay, okay, and from here, let's see, we can go over to the tone curve, and we'll just play with that a little bit. We'll bring the shadows down a little bit more. I think something like that is gonna be good. Bring our highlights up. And from here, I'm just tweaking it. You know, these are just gonna be really small changes, um, just subtle things to make it better or worse, and, and I'll just play with it from there, but you can see if we go to our before and after here, this is before now, and this is after. So we've completely saved this image with split toning. It was pretty much a nothing burger before, maybe something you could get a black and white image out of, but you can take those highlights and those shadows and really do something different with the image. Okay, that's it guys. Thanks so much for watching. There's actually gonna be a link in the description below if you'd like to download the raw file and follow along and see how split toning can help this image out and just give you a chance to practice it so that you can hopefully use it uh, in the future. Obviously don't share the images your own or anything like that on social media or anywhere. Uh, the copyright is still mine, but you knew that. Um, guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure, please, please make sure that you like, comment, and above all else, subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna be putting a lot of effort into more videos 
in 2018 and beyond. And I hope that you'll come along for the ride and I'd love to hear what you think down in the comments. So let's get a conversation going. Um, that's it for now, guys. Thanks so much and adios.